about this boat. The Savvy of London is a sailing vessel built by the Danes in 2014. Uh, under my direction, I had it built. It's uh, a racing boat, actually, that I had designed to be a family sailing vessel. Um, so it's got a very tall rig, uh, very powerful sails, but ultimately it's a family home. So welcome to the owner's cabin. Uh, this cabin is forward, has a nice big king size bed, uh, nice and airy, nice views out over the bays when you're anchored from the port lights. So Paul, what really strikes me about this boat is that it's really uh, efficient as far as the storage and yet there is quite a lot of storage spaces on board. Yeah, the boats when they're built, they computer aided design and every place you can get a bit of storage, there's a bit of storage. So there are cupboards, boxes, flaps, everywhere um, and a huge amount of storage. You could provision this boat to not go to shore for probably three months if you needed to. We do have water makers, generators, etc. on board, washing machines, dishwashers, all of these things, modern conveniences. And ultimately it's, uh, it's his own little island. You need a lot of storage for that and obviously some dried food. Um, yes, you could survive for quite some time on here. So you can eat and sleep. How do you shower and more importantly go to the toilet on a boat? Uh, so the boat has two shower rooms, uh, wet rooms with heads, toilets in them. Uh, they're all tanked on board, all fresh water running as any home would have. So just in here is the owner's uh, shower room, wet room, where there is a nice picture of my former vessel, the toilet and a nice shower area, wet room. They're doing plenty of storage in there. So at the stern of the vessel, we have two double berths. Uh, they also have sea berths in them. Uh, so it's a nice comfortable room. This is the smaller of the two. In here, have a nice large double bed. These cots here, these are for really useful for putting children in. We've often had heads and tails, what do they call them, top and tail children in these. Uh, they also do this. Uh, the reason for that is when you're sailing, the boat can be heavily heeled, often over 30 degrees, and this stops crew members falling out, <laughs> which is rather useful when you're at sea. Um, I've slept in these a few times at sea. They're very comfortable, and there's a lovely window here where you can see the, uh, the world going by. And you've seen dolphins before, haven't you? Dolphins out of these windows forwards, yeah, lots of dolphins, hundreds of dolphins. Um, probably the most magical experience was a pod of sperm whale, which we saw out of these windows and then went and got in the water with. They were quite something. Yeah, you got some beautiful footage of those. Was it mm. quite frightening to see a pod of huge whales yeah. that were what, as big as the boat? The uh, male was 60 feet. Uh, he was bigger than the boat and weighed three times what the boat weighs. And at one point he did get a little angry. So yes, quite unnerving. They're big creatures, but so peaceful up to that point. And the young were so beautiful to watch, very graceful. So this is the larger of the two aft staterooms, cabins, whatever you want to call them. Uh, in here we have access, not only the same setup as next door, but we also have access to generator, water maker, uh, all the electronic components, there's engine access here. Uh, beneath here are all the domestic batteries, all the hot water systems and so on, and a huge amount of storage. And what happens if you're under sail or you're motoring along and something breaks? Yeah, that happens a lot. Um, uh, a great deal. You have to fix it. You're out at sea. You can't call the AA. You can't call an engineer. You have to learn. So this boat I've been sailing, I sailed it, sailed it probably 15,000 nautical miles now. And everything pretty much has broken at least once. So you learn to fix on the fly. Uh, most of it requires a great deal of logic, but you work out how to fix things or to get around them. Um, there's this thing in sailing called a jury rig. It's what you do to something to make it work even though it's broken. You do a lot of jury rigging on boats. This is the most important device on the boat. Uh, often when I'm sailing at night, I won't turn it on just yet. Often when I'm sailing at night, the only thing that stays out 
is the coffee machine. The coffee machine runs 24-7 and keeps me awake. Uh, when you're doing the 3 a.m. shift, it's pretty hard to stay awake if you've had a very long day sailing. So, coffee machine, very, very important. Uh, we've got kettles and toasters and all the other stuff, but this thing, this is the thing that keeps us going. So we have a water maker, uh, makes around 80 litres of water per hour. We have 600 litres of water storage on board. Uh, water maker broke yesterday, rather frustratingly, um, but 600 litres keeps you going for a while. Uh, unless you have children on board, in which case they use most of that in one day. And how do you cook? Cooking uh, is actually remarkably easy. So we have a freezer, a fridge, a microwave, a gas oven, three ring hob. It's, it's like cooking at home. Boats like this are like having a small apartment. And uh, it's pretty much a small apartment. At sea, however, it can be interesting. On a very rough passage, typically you'd make food before the bad weather comes and you snack on it as and when. But if you're forced to cook, and I've made a full chicken curry in a very rough sea once before, there are a few things well set up on the boat. For example, if you're cooking, you can brace against here. Uh, cookers on boats are always gimbaled, which means that when the boat is hitting, it can do this or do this, which also gives you a nice flat surface to work with if you're chopping uh, vegetables or meat. You can do that on here while it's gimbaling. But it is an acquired taste and an art which needs practice. I believe this is a very important part of the boat. What is this here? This is skipper's chair, this is the chart table. So pretty much all of the systems will operate from here. Uh, all the electrical connection switches, all the battery and power management systems, and all the navigation systems are all based from here. Um, in the old days, a chart table is where you'd have your charts lined out and you'd plot your course over the ground and work out where you've been and where you're going and what uh, sort of time frames are involved. Nowadays, we've got the likes of the B&G systems which are immensely useful at making life easy on the sea. Radar, uh, collision avoidance systems, electronic charting, wind instruments and so on. A uh, lot of telemetry on a the boat. There are uh, about 150 different numbers being recorded at all times on a BNG system, for example, that tell us what's going on with the boat. This is where you sit on a long night passage. There's no point being upstairs, you can't see, so you turn the radar on. The radar has this thing called a guard zone, which puts an imaginary guard zone around the boat, normally around a mile out, and if anything enters that mile circle, the alarm goes off, tells you there's something nearby and gives you a chance to react. Otherwise, this is where you tend to spend most of your nights when you're on watch. Okay, so we're presently on the island of Mallorca in a place called Soyer, a beautiful place, Soyer, one of the prettiest ports in the world, it's very natural. Uh, as you can see, there's plenty of vessels, they're little black things of vessels, if we just zoom in. We are currently in a marina waiting for some pretty horrible weather that's coming in from the east, very strong, to disappear. And then we're going to be uh, sailing over, over to Barcelona, which is up here. As you can see, these charts work rather like an iPad, but they are absolutely essential. They tell you the water depth, pretty much everything that's going on. It tells you if there's any vessels on here, and obviously the radar will overlay to show you what's going on. Also. from shore happens with a dinghy. This dinghy goes into the transom at the back and we deploy it wherever we get to a beach or an anchorage. We can go ashore and find nice restaurants. And then often in the dark after a few glasses of wine, I very professionally drive it back to the boat and I always tie it on. 
Always tight. Always. Always. I've never once left it untied and found myself in trouble having to go and find it in the middle of the night. That's never happened. Never. You've never, never had to impress three uh, women on And I wouldn't be at all embarrassed that. if it did, I'd tell you. Of course. <laughs>